Hi, good evening. It's uh, Jeff Miskoff, Dr. Miskoff. It's 5.30 p.m. on March 23rd, 2020, and I'm uh, broadcasting here from my living room in Tom's River. After a long seven days in an ICU, I had my first day off and, and slept in until 10.30. I think it's the first time I've slept that late in about a decade, getting those melatonin levels up, and hopefully we'll find that that's protective in the future. Uh, I think sleep is the answer to a lot of our, our common ailments, uh, just getting good rest. So make sure to get your at least seven or eight hours a night as an adult. Um, anyway, today I wanted to address prophylaxis. I'm getting some questions about that, uh, whether or not to take hydroxychloroquine, uh, which is also known as Plaquenil or chloroquine, um, plus azithromycin or antibiotics such as a Z-Pak. In a person uh, or patient who's been exposed uh, to a known contact with COVID-19 and um, again, uh, you know, you may have a, uh, a family member that was exposed, a friend that you were hanging out with uh, that then tested positive uh, for COVID-19, and then uh, you call your uh, primary care to find out, you know, should you be taking these things? And right now the answer I think should be uh, still no. We have no evidence that prophylaxis uh, with these medications for somebody uh, who was exposed to a positive do anything, and it's also potentially adding to national shortage. <clears throat> there are patients that take Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine chronically uh, for their rheumatology conditions like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, uh, sarcoidosis, and they're finding uh, that there are uh, shortages going on and that they can't get their medicine. So we don't want to create an environment where we don't have evidence um, and then everybody is uh, trying to get these meds uh, to take prophylactically and then uh, they're causing a shortage for others who actually need it. So for now, I would suggest that uh, we do not provide prophylaxis with these medicines until we have uh, further evidence. Uh, the other issue I wanted to talk about or question was ibuprofen, uh, medications such as uh, Motrin, Advil, Aleve, and are they risky to take in this COVID-19 environment? And right now what we know is that the COVID-19 or coronavirus is taken into the body through these ACE2 receptors, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors, which live in the lung, the heart, the kidney, the muscle, and, and there's thought that potentially taking ibuprofen or steroids, so prednisone, um, may upregulate these ACE2 receptors and uh, increase the ability for the, uh, the virus to get in and, and cause its problems. Uh, right now, we, we just know at the basic science level that the ibuprofens can, do, uh, can have this effect on ACE2 and uh, that the ACE2 receptors do in fact live in these, these tissues. So uh, for right now, the general recommendations uh, is to uh, not take ibuprofen for fever, not take ibuprofen at all, uh, and take Tylenol instead. Um, of course, if you're isolated at home and you don't have any symptoms and you have to take an ibuprofen, uh, I think that's reasonable, but the general recommendation is to stay away from it until we know more about it. Of course, Tylenol is not a completely benign agent or medication. Uh, certainly, it shouldn't be mi mixed with any alcohol. Uh, it, it does go through a similar pathway in the liver, and I've seen uh, liver is shut down from this in the past, even with minimal alcohol intake and Tylenol. So uh, everybody uh, should be aware of that. Uh, but it, it does not affect the ACE2 uh, receptor or upregulate it like we think steroids, anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs, ibuprofen, etc. Uh, may. Um, I did see something from uh, Boston on um, cardiology societies. Uh, they are not at this point recommending switching uh, ACE inhibitors, which are also thought to potentially upregulate the ACE2 receptor, um, uh, but to keep the patients on those chronic medications, whether it be an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, angiotensin receptor blocker. Uh, there's some suggesting that the ARBs may even be protective by having an uh, opposite effect on that ACE2 receptor, uh, but we're not suggesting starting ARBs just because of that. Um, so like a, a, a Losartan or something along those lines. Uh, uh, so at this point in time, we would just say, if you had a de novo patient who has new hypertension and you had the choice of an ACE or an ARB, potentially you'd go for the ARB uh, uh, over the other, uh, or others are just reaching for other classes at this point in time until we know more. Um, okay, so uh, I think uh, those are the important points about prophylaxis. Uh, what's the deal with ibuprofen? and um, uh, a small tidbit on ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor uh, 2 blockers. Everybody have a good night, uh, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.